Welcome back, everyone, for another deep dive. Yeah. You know, especially for all of our listeners of the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. Absolutely. This one's going to be particularly interesting for you guys. Wow. I mean, you know, with your interest in, in testing and with over 4,500 labs nationwide, you know. Exactly. We're going to sort of shift gears a little bit today and talk about something that's really relevant to that, which is prevention. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a deep dive into some of the latest breakthroughs in HIV vaccine trials and some of the most innovative prevention strategies that are out there as of April 2025. Yeah, you know, it's an area that's just so full of potential. Mm. And especially, I think, for anyone who's been following you know, the evolution of HIV prevention, you know, we've had some huge progress with antiretroviral therapy, right? Mm -hmm. ART, as we call it, mm -hmm. which allows people with HIV to live, you know, pretty normal lives with the virus. And then also pre-exposure prophylaxis mm -hmm. or PVEP, right? Which is a way for people who don't have HIV to prevent getting it. But the reality is, is that HIV is still a huge problem around the world, right? right. There's millions of people living with it and we're still seeing new infections happening every day. Mm -hmm. And so the development of an effective vaccine is really gonna be a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're gonna dig into today. We've we've been looking at all of the most recent information on the current trials that are going on for vaccines, some really novel research that's happening and some new prevention methods that are moving through the pipeline right now. And we're going to focus particularly on the work of a couple of companies, Immunity Bio and Gilead, that seem to be at the forefront of all of this new stuff. And so, you know, what we want to do today is really break down what's happening and talk about the science in a way that makes sense, right? Not get too bogged down, right. but really understand, you know, what's going on and what the implications are, both for the successes and the challenges. There are always challenges. Of course. So our goal is to give you the information you need, especially because you guys are so into, you know, all of the aspects of HIV. And so we really want to give you insights into what the future of prevention could look like. Yeah, I think that's a great goal. So, you know, let's start with, you know, the basic question. Even with all of the tools we have now, right? like art and pre-PP, why is it still so important to develop a vaccine? That's a really good question. And I think, you know, when you look at the numbers, it becomes pretty clear why. So right. we're talking about, you know, something like 38 million people around the world who are living with HIV. Wow. And even as recently as 2023, there were still about 1.3 million new cases, you know. That's a lot. It's huge. And, you know, Tragically, hundreds of thousands of people still die every year from AIDS-related illnesses. And while art has made a massive difference, you know, people with HIV can live long and healthy lives, but yeah. it's a treatment. It's not a cure. It's not a cure. Exactly. Mm. And, you know, that's where a vaccine comes in. Right. It offers a completely different way of approaching this. So, you know, treatments are critical for people who are already living with HIV. But a vaccine, that's about stopping it before it even starts. And... So many experts have said that getting a safe and effective vaccine is really going to be the key to finally putting an end to this epidemic. Absolutely. So the why is pretty clear, but what's been so difficult about making an HIV vaccine? I mean, this has been, you know, a really long journey, right? It has been. You know, it's not like developing a flu vaccine, right? Right. HIV is a really, really tricky virus. Yeah. And it's got a bunch of really unique things about it that have made it, well, frankly, a nightmare for scientists for decades. Yeah. So first off, you know, it mutates like crazy. Yeah. It's constantly changing. Right. Which means that a vaccine needs to be, you know, super broad and needs to be able to work against a huge range of different variations of the virus. It's almost like, well, imagine trying to design a lock that can be opened by a key that keeps changing shape. Right. A moving target. Yeah, exactly. A constantly moving target. The second thing is that HIV yeah, it attacks your immune system directly. Right. Specifically, it goes after these cells called CD4 T cells, mm -hmm. which are, you know, they're like the generals of your immune system. They coordinate everything, right? right. And so HIV goes after the very system that a vaccine would need to use to fight it. Wow. And then the third thing, which is really weird, is that there's no natural immunity to HIV. Mm. So, you know, with most infections, if you get sick and recover, you usually have some protection if you encounter that germ again. Right. But with HIV, nobody has ever naturally cleared the virus and become immune. Wow. So figuring out how to create that kind of immunity through a vaccine, well, it's been incredibly difficult. So it's a tough virus. It is a tough virus. But the good news is that 
you know, science is always moving forward. That's right. And researchers are using some really cutting edge technologies to try and find a way, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, uh, you know, one thing we're seeing a lot of is research into mRNA vaccines. You know, those are the vaccines that became famous during the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. And they basically work by giving your cells instructions on how to make little pieces of the virus, harmless pieces. And that teaches your immune system how to recognize and attack the real virus if it ever shows up. Right. Another big area of focus is developing these things called broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs for short. BNABs. Yeah, BNABs. And these are special antibodies that can actually block infection from a bunch of different strains of HIV, which is pretty cool. Okay. And then there's also a whole field called immune system engineering, hmm. which is basically about figuring out how to reprogram your immune system so that it can really effectively target and destroy HIV infected cells. So these are some pretty amazing developments. Let's talk about some of the most recent ones, you know, the updates that we promised we'd talk about for April 2025. So let's start with Immunity Bio. They've been working on this T-cell based vaccine approach, which sounds really interesting. It is really interesting. So, you know, most traditional vaccines, they're all about creating antibodies yeah. right, to stop the virus from even getting into your cells. But Immunity Bio is going in a totally different direction. They're focusing on training your immune system, those killer T cells, to actually seek out and destroy cells that are already infected with HIV. So it's like a seek and destroy mission. Pretty much. And you know what's really kind of revolutionary about this is that they're realizing that controlling those infected cells might be the key to stopping HIV from becoming a long-term problem. Yeah. And we're starting to see this idea gain a lot of attention in research on other chronic viral infections as well. That's fascinating. And I understand that we're actually expecting some news from Immunity Bio this month. We are, yeah. Yeah. They're supposed to be releasing some new results from their clinical trials in April. And there's a lot of buzz in the science world about this because their vaccine is designed to target these very specific parts of the HIV virus called conserved regions. Conserved regions. Yeah, so conserved regions are parts of the virus that don't mutate as much. And that means that if you can target those areas with a vaccine, you might be able to protect against a whole lot more HIV strains. So if this works, I mean, if their trial results are positive, what kind of an impact could that have? Oh, it could be huge. I mean, if it really works, it could be a major breakthrough in preventing HIV. Because imagine if your immune system can quickly identify and destroy those infected cells right at the beginning, you might be able to stop the virus from ever really taking hold. Wow. And you know what? Immunity Bio is actually having an investor day on April 15th, so they'll probably share even more information then. Okay, so mark your calendars, April 15th. That's definitely something to keep an eye on, especially for our listeners who are really plugged in to the latest on HIV. So let's move on to Gilead Sciences now. They've been working on something called Lena Capavir, and that's not a traditional vaccine, is it? It's not, no. Lena Capavir is actually an injectable antiviral drug, and it's specifically for preventing HIV. But what makes it so cool is it's long acting, so you only need to get an injection twice a year. Wow, so that's way different from, you know, taking a pill every day, like with PP. Yeah, exactly. And that could be a huge deal for people, right? Yeah. Because it's so much easier to stick to, you know? Yeah, definitely. So where are they at with getting it approved? So in February of this year, the FDA accepted their new drug applications for HIV prevention. So if it gets final approval, linacapavir would be the first and only twice yearly option for preventing HIV. So that would be a pretty big addition to our prevention toolbox, huh? It would be huge. And I understand that they're also looking at using linacapavir with other therapies. They are, yeah. So at the big HIV conference, CROI, back in March, Gilead presented some really interesting data on a long-acting treatment that combines linacapavir with those broadly neutralizing antibodies we were talking about, mm -hmm. the BNABs. You're right, the BNABs. And this combination actually worked really well in a phase two trial, and they got breakthrough therapy designation for the FDA which means that the FDA thinks this could be a really significant treatment option for people living with HIV. So it sounds like there's a lot of positive momentum here, both with the vaccine research, like with Immunity Bio and with these new prevention tools like Lena Capavir. But, you know, science isn't always a straight line to success, right? Oh, absolutely not. There are bumps in the road and there have been some setbacks lately, haven't there? Yeah, unfortunately there have. You know, developing a safe and effective HIV vaccine is just incredibly complex. Yeah. It's really, really hard. And one of the recent trials, the pre-PPVAC trial, they had to stop vaccinations back in November. Oh, wow. Yeah, because the data was showing that the vaccine regimen wasn't really working that well. 
And, you know, it's disappointing, of course, but it's also a reminder of just how tough this is. And that even when things look promising, sometimes they don't pan out the way we hoped. And, you know, science is all about learning from both our successes and our failures. So true. And speaking of things that can make this work harder, we have to talk about funding. Yeah, that's a big one. Because that really drives everything, right? And there have been some pretty worrying reports lately about potential funding cuts. Yeah, unfortunately there have. So just last month, in March, there were a bunch of reports about, you know, threats to all the progress we've made in fighting HIV. And this was because of proposed or actual funding cuts from some major donors, like the U.S. and some European countries. And these were serious reports, you know, from places like Reuters, the Financial Times, the Guardian. And it's a pretty bleak picture. Wow. So what could happen if those funding cuts actually go through? Well, the experts are saying that it could mean that a lot of important programs would have to be cut back or even stopped altogether. And this would be, you know, for prevention programs, testing programs, treatment programs, especially in countries where resources are already limited, you know, where the impact of the epidemic is the greatest. Yeah. And the rejections are really scary. They're saying that if we don't fix this funding problem, we could actually see a big increase in new HIV infections and deaths by 2030. Wow. And that would just wipe out so much of the progress that we've worked so hard for. It's really disheartening to hear that. It really shows how important, you know, sustained support is for tackling a global issue like this. It really does. So, you know, we've been talking a lot about clinical trials and mm. they're really the foundation of developing anything safe and effective, whether it's a vaccine or a treatment, right? Absolutely. So for our listeners, you know, many of whom are very familiar with HIV testing. Right. Can you talk a little bit about the role of clinical trials in all of this? Sure. So clinical trials are basically the way that we figure out if a potential vaccine or a prevention method actually works yeah and if it's safe right and there are organizations like the hiv vaccine trials network or hbtn and they're the ones who design and run these trials mm -hmm. and these trials go through different phases mm -hmm. so the early ones they're really small and they're just looking at whether the vaccine is safe and if it triggers the right kind of immune response and then as you move on to later phases the trials get bigger and then they're looking at whether the vaccine or the prevention method actually prevents people from getting HIV in the real world. And it's not just about having, you know, the right scientific methods, Absolutely. right? It's also about having the right people in the trials. It is, yeah. So if we want to know if a vaccine is going to work for everyone, we need to make sure that the people in the trials represent the diversity of people who are at risk for HIV. Right. So that means we need people of different races and ethnicities, different genders, different ages from different places. Yeah. And people with different risk factors, because that's the only way to know if a vaccine is going to be truly effective and safe for everyone who needs it. It's about health equity. OK, so before we wrap up, I know that there are a couple of events coming up that might be of interest to our listeners, you know, who are so involved in the HIV community, maybe through, you know, their interest in testing or through the HIV RNA test guide podcast what are those events? So there are a couple of big ones coming up. The first one is the Biomedical HIV Prevention Summit 2025. And that's happening in Atlanta from April 10th to 12th. Yeah. And that summit is really focusing on this issue of health inequities. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that some communities, especially communities of color, have less access to HIV prevention and treatment. Right. And it's a really important event because it brings together all these different people, researchers, doctors, community advocates, policymakers, and they're all there to share ideas and work together to try and make prevention more equitable. That's fantastic. And there's another event specifically for the Latinx community, right? Yeah, there is. It's called the National Latinx Conference wow. on HIV, HCV, SUD 2025. Mm. And that's going to be in Las Vegas from April 29th to May 1st. And that conference is all about giving healthcare providers and social workers the latest information and tools to help them serve Latinx communities. Yeah. Because those communities are also disproportionately affected by HIV, along with things like hepatitis C and substance use disorders. And both of those conferences, I think, really highlight the importance of, you know, addressing the specific needs of different communities. Absolutely. It's not a one size fits all approach. Not at all. So as we wrap up today, it seems like we're at a really exciting but also crucial point in the fight against HIV. We are. 
you know, we've got these really promising developments in vaccine research, like immunity bios T cell approach. Yeah. And these new prevention methods like Lena Capivir are getting close to being available. It's amazing progress. It is amazing. But we also have to be realistic about the challenges. Right. You know, things like the pre pvet trial not working out. Yeah. And the very real possibility of funding cuts that could really hurt our progress. It's a complicated picture, that's for sure. It is. But I think what gives me hope is the dedication of the researchers and the constant innovation in science and the strength and resilience of the communities that are most affected by HIV. Hmm. All of those things working together, that's what's going to make a difference. Absolutely. And so for all of you listening, you know, you guys are so informed and engaged in this fight, and we really want to leave you with this thought. As we see these new tools and strategies emerging, how do you think we can make sure that they reach the communities that need them the most? How do we make sure that everyone benefits from these advances? Mm -hmm. It's a really important conversation to have. It is. And, you know, for anyone who wants to dive deeper into any of the topics we've talked about today, I'd encourage you to check out the websites of the organizations we mentioned. Immunity Bio, Gilead, pre -PVAC, the HIV Vaccine Trials Network, and HNC. They're all great resources. Absolutely. Staying informed and engaged is so important. And even though there are going to be challenges, you know, there will be setbacks. Of course. But I think the global effort, the science, it all gives us real reason to be hopeful, you know? Yeah, absolutely. We are making progress in the fight against H-AIDS. So thank you for joining us for this deep dive. It's been a pleasure.